you, would you agree it was a boring car? Well, I, I wouldn't. Really? No, I think it's wonderful. It's lovely to drive it. Yeah. Very comfortable. Yeah. I think it looks nice as well. Do you? Yes, I do. Which, which bit? All of it. I think it's all very nice. No, I'm sorry. I, I still think it's boring. How many Toyota Corollas have you had now? This will be my eighth. You've had eight Corollas? Yes. So each time you want to buy a new car, do you ever think, let's think of something else? Uh, I've looked at different ones occasionally, but I, with the Corolla being so reliable, um, I've never had one back to the garage for a repair or breakdown or whatever. Buying something because it's reliable is like marrying someone because they're punctual. You need something else as well, exciting underwear, bright eyes, anything, anything but this. It has active your control. I have no idea what that is or what it does, but I want it so much it hurts. And you do too. You, you need to go to the pub with a car with active your control and say, hey everyone, I've got active your control. You do. You do. You know, the skyline could be a rancid pork chop, but they've ladled so much sauce on it you'd never know. Silicon has turned something flat into a rumbustuous and playful double D. Now, you'd think Honda would be a little different. You see, Honda is unusual among Japanese car makers. It was founded by a man rather than a corporation, and its goal was to make engines first and money hopefully. They put Honda engines in everything from lawnmowers to speedboats. They put them in household generators and Formula One cars. Honda engines are amazing. I mean, would you just listen to this? And the technology in this NSX doesn't stop with the engine. The whole car is made entirely from aluminium. It's fast and vicious, yet it's no harder to drive than a food blender. So what's wrong with it then? Well, predictably, it's a copy. They've tried to make it look like a Ferrari and it hasn't really worked at all. Let me, let me show you what I'm on about. There are lots of ugly little details all over it that spoil the purity of the shape. This headlamp washer, for instance. Aerial mounting here. It sticks up like a termite hill. Hideous. And look at this door lock here, it's, it's like a piece of acne really, spoils the look of the whole panel. There's no way that Ferrari would ever, ever allow anything like that. This is a cover version of a Ferrari and it's every bit as wrong as Rolf Harris's cover version of Stairway to Heaven. I don't get this. I mean, we've had Japanese restaurants in Britain now for years and they've never felt the need to make their raw fish and rice look like a shepherd's pie. So why do Japanese car firms feel the need to copy Europe? Maybe it's because when they don't copy Europe, things go wrong. This is the new Toyota Yaris estate. Just savour the awfulness. Imagine how many volts they'd have to pump into your private parts before you'd buy a car that looked like that.
The Japanese car industry may have a global network of factories, all the technology, and a just-in-time manufacturing philosophy that would leave a racing driver gasping. But what's the point when the end result looks like this? All this, 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 all this. Look at this! This is the Suzuki Wagon R, the best-selling car in Japan. It's a bloody Wendy house.